As a radio access network provider, the most common task you're going to perform is onboarding your gateways. With Senate, we've worked very hard to make sure the registration process is as simple as it can be. Now, before we dive into an actual registration, let me show you our documentation. As you may already know, our documentation is organized by developer, application provider, and RAN provider. And for this case, we'll be using the RAN provider documentation. Now, when you go to base stations and select software, you'll be provided a list of all of our supported makes and models. And specifically, as a RAN provider, you'll want to take note of the RAN provider column. Every checkbox means that this gateway has been qualified to be deployed in a production environment. What does that mean? It means that we put in security measures to make sure that there will be no tampering with your product out in the field. Now, not only is this a list of supported gateways, but every gateway name has a link to our specific documentation on how to install the Senate Packet Forwarder. You'll see that we have a developer package, which you're probably already familiar with. However, when you go to production, you'll want to use the RAN provider package. This ensures that you have all the security measures in place for production rollout. So now that you know that our documentation is there, let's go ahead and do a real registration and installation. I'm going to go back to my portal login here. And what I have is a fresh RAN provider account set up with no gateways installed. If we do a quick search, you'll find no results. So here is when we get the process started. Now, I'm working with a multi-tech conduit, and although they have many different versions, the one I'm working with is an mLinux, and it's version 3.3.6. This type of box is well known as a developer gateway, but the process is just the same. Now, we'll go back to our portal account and start the process by clicking this Add Base Station button. It'll ask for a few details, but mainly you select the model, here I have the multi-tech conduit. We'll enter the serial number, which is unique per device, and it's in the back of my box, which I'll enter now. And for this case, I will actually pull an EUI from the Senate pool. Now some gateways, they come with an EUI burned in that you can reuse, uh, but for this case, I'm going to just lease one from Senate. This button right here, allocate base station EUI, is all you need to click to generate one. Just confirm yes and it'll populate in this field. We'll give our gateway a general name for reference. I'll just call this Craig's test. And you have the option to select the band. We're in the US so I'm going to leave it as default US 902-928 and because this gateway is an 8 channel gateway you can actually select the sub band. For this I'll leave it as default, which is the first bank of eight. But if need be, you can select any other of the eight subbands. We'll leave alerts disabled and the classification as community, and we'll not deploy this gateway because clearly it's not deployed in production. And just click save. And just like that, our gateway is now registered. Now the next step, which is probably the easiest, is installing the Senate packet forwarder on our gateway. Now, I'm going to go back to the documentation section and just scroll to the top here. As I said earlier, I'm working with an mLinux version of the multi-tech conduit. And right down here, under the prerequisites, this is basically instructions on how to disable the built-in packet forwarder that comes with your gateway. Now, this varies between device to device, so for this unique case, it's a matter of just stopping the network server and disabling the service that's running. Now, assuming that's all been completed, we can scroll down to the actual installation methods. So for this gateway, if we go back to it, and I just type in the command etsy issue, we'll see that the version I'm running is 3.3.6 right here. And if we go back to our documentation section, this mLinux version will line up with what we're working with. You may notice the version says mLinux 3.1.x but we support the major version release of 3 as noted above. 3.1 is really the minimum version supported. 
and it's simply a matter of hitting the copy button and pasting it into your conduit. Now when I hit enter, this will do a few checks. It'll check for connectivity, it'll check the current version that's running on the actual box, and if everything passes, it'll install the Senate packet forwarder. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter, and this will take a few minutes to complete, and while we're waiting for that, I'll just fast forward it. And that's it. We can see the installation status is complete, and even the registration status is considered registered since the packet forwarder reached out to the network server and saw that we had one registered in our account. Now, back in our RAN portal account, our test gateway actually still shows a status of red, as you can see next to the gateway UI. And this is okay, because we just installed a packet forwarder, and as it communicates with the network server, the network server is going to do some checks on the gateway to make sure everything is in a green status. And there are multiple layers to that, things like WebSocket connection, SSH connection, uplinks, downlinks, and even any open alerts or cases associated with it. And if we click into this gateway, we'll actually see that uplinks and downlinks are enabled, indicated by the green status. And you can even scroll down here on your system events and see that there was a version changed from nothing to 2.11.18, which is the Senate Packet Forwarder Bundle, and the OS version changed from nothing to 3.3.6, which, as noted earlier, is the version of our operating system on the M Linux box. Now, after a while, you'll notice back here on our main page that the icon has gone green, and that's because there's considered no issues with this gateway. And at this point, it's up and running and ready to receive traffic. Now, at this point, we've gone through the entire process of registering a gateway on your RAN portal account to installing the Senate packet forwarder on the gateway itself to verifying connectivity through your portal account. At this point, you're ready to do either testing or then to deploy your gateway. I hope this video has demonstrated how easy it is to onboard gateways to your RAN account. If you have any questions or need assistance, our support team is always available at support at Seneco.com. Thanks.